Hello there fellow adventurers, I'm here at Plymouth Plantation and today we're talking about Pilgrim. Pilgrim Faith as a Weapon is the very first game developed by Arxel Tribe, the weird and wonderful team behind games such as Ring the Legend of the Nibelungen and Faust 7 Games of the Soul, which was recently reviewed by the pretentious hipster. Pilgrim is the first in what's known as the Paolo Coelho Trilogy, followed by The Legend of the Prophet and the Assassin, and The Secrets of Alamut. It's based on the novel The Pilgrimage by Paolo Coelho. We must never stop dreaming. Dreams provide nourishment for the soul, just as a meal does for the body. The good fight is the one that's fought in the name of our dreams. We play as Simon de Longcroix, and our quest is given to us by our father just before he dies, to take a secret manuscript and travel with it to Toulouse. Go to Toulouse and find Beatrice. Did he say Atrus? The page, my friend. The page. Actually, the man we're looking for is called Petrus, and he's not an easy man to find. I am looking for a man named Petrus. I don't know anyone of that name. I am looking for a certain Petrus. I don't know anyone answering that name. I am looking for a man named Petrus. Unknown to me. Would you know anyone named Petrus by any chance? Oh no, for sure. Would you know about someone named Petrus? Not that I remember. Do you know someone named Petrus? I don't. Going back to the introduction, there's a whole dream sequence that was missing from my version of the game. But you can watch it in Twilight Adventures playthrough. It's pretty badass and foreshadows events later in the game. There's also a sword fight that feels very Final Fantasy. Let's get back to finding the secret room that hides the manuscripts we need to give to this mysterious Petrus fellow. I spent quite a while searching this library before finally deciding to sit down and think things through. I find that if I just sit down and think... The solution presents itself. With the manuscript in our bag, in other words our inventory, it's time to start our pilgrimage to Toulouse. Our first obstacle is how to get across this bridge. Maybe these circus performers can help. I am looking for a certain Petrus. Good revenge. Kill him. No, no. I just want to talk to him. So what? You talk to him, then you kill him. Hmm, I get the feeling this guy doesn't just use his knives for circus tricks. The head of the troop is very proud of his steam machine invention. See? Down there is a pair of bellows to bring some air and pressure into the fire chamber. Through those four holes, I pour some water into the reservoirs. Once it boils, the steam escapes through the narrow chimney in the center, where it meets with the hot air. When they come in contact, they yield a colored smoke! So, in order to progress, we first have to convince this hermit to help us by, you guessed it, making his pet mouse fly. The manual gives us a hint that we need to find a source of energy. Hmm, I wonder where we can find a source of energy around here. I give up. Be careful though, or the mouse might fly away for good. Oh. My mouse! Bring my mouse back down! Immediately! Oh, I'm utterly sorry. I You'll most likely see this end screen appear abruptly many times during your adventure. So remember the Adventure Gamer mantra. Save early. Save often. When we arrive at Toulouse, the first place we explore is the local market, where we can chat to all the different vendors. Each one has their own personality and motivations, and the trick is to figure out how they relate to each other. Talking is somewhat awkward as you have to wait for them to finish their animations first. You again, young man! Don't tell me you've got another valueless foreign currency to exchange! 
The people you meet and items you find are added to the interface, which you can then use as subjects of conversation rather than the typical dialogue options. So, after you meet the shoemaker, for example, you can then talk about him with other people. The shoemaker is a nice fellow. Nice, talented, and uh, poor as a cucumber. Before we leave this market, let's enjoy the soothing sounds of shoemaking and knife sharpening. What are those knives for? For cutting tongues out when it gets a little too inquisitive. Alright, I think that's our cue to bugger off. Before too long, we unexpectedly wind up in prison and have to solve a puzzle with a biblical inscription. They reminded me of Christian games like Nakar and Isles of Derek. Then there's this mural puzzle where you have to choose the right order of murals based on the plagues of Egypt and the Ten Commandments. Fortunately, there's a handy encyclopedia which gives you the clues needed to solve this. But this isn't a fully fledged edutainment game like Pepper's Adventures in Time. Without going too much into spoiler territory, we find the Petrus we're looking for and he trains us to fight the good fight. Right after we insert disc 2. From this moment on, my task will be to convince you to join us in the good fight. The second half of the game feels much more like a spiritual quest and more in line with the themes and concepts of Paolo Coelho's book. This was actually my favourite part of the game, where Petrus tells us to seek Durandal, the legendary Sword of Roland. You need a weapon, Simon. Not just any weapon. You need Durandal. Durandal? Why not the Holy Grail while you're at it? Oh, and uh, while you're at it, can you turn the music down, please? There's a preference to turn the sound off, but it turns off all sound, so I only recommend it if you want to play Silent Pilgrim. <coughs> There's a puzzle here where you have to insert a staff into one of these holes, but if you choose the wrong one, the staff is lost forever, and as far as I know, you're in an unwinnable state. What was that mantra again? Save early, save often. Save early, save often. In our quest, we're pursued by Diego Dozma of the Spanish Inquisition. Hail to you. Good evening, lad. Look at the size of that hat. At least he won't need an umbrella when it rains. Our mortal enemy, though, is called Hades, or as they pronounce it, Hades. Hades is Simon. Simon is Hades. With a name like that, I expect he's one mean motherfucker. Hello, man breed. Yep, just as I suspected. I will derive no pleasure from killing you, but I will eat you with joy. <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny guy, Haddis. I bet you're a master swordsman, but have you ever made a mouse fly? The latest stages of the game get increasingly abstract and surreal, and it feels a lot like Ring. Though Ring doesn't have a blubbering ghost called Fool. Um, on my soul star thou shalt not pass, for I am the keeper of that glass. <laughs> Ooh. You'll have to undertake the pilgrimage yourself to find all the answers but it's sure to make you feel like a rat in a maze looking for the cheese. Don't forget to study your encyclopedia as there's an exam at the end. Seriously, these three judges ask you questions about what you've learned on your travels. This all leads to the final question. Simon de Longcroix, do you want to join the soldiers of the dream? Um... No, I'm good, thanks. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be so. So, while the credits roll, what do I think of Pilgrim Faith as a Weapon? Well, honestly, I feel like this is one of those gems that got lost in the mists of time, and is well worth rediscovering. It came 7th in the Just Adventure list of the 10 best adventure games that almost no one has ever played. There's no other review of it on YouTube, so I encourage all fellow adventurers to make their own video and follow the teachings of Petrus. You must grow in order to catch the rays of the sun. 
I'm gonna give Pilgrim seven rubber chickens with pulleys in the middle. Save early, save often. Save early, say often. Save early and often. <laughs>